In April 2017, marches for science were held throughout the United States and Europe. And demonstrators were protesting against the climate change and against the rise of populism and anti-scientism um, nowadays. In my opinion, the exact sciences, the so-called exact sciences, were overrepresented in these demonstrations. Why do I say this? Because in my opinion, what is going on nowadays concerning science and truth and knowledge is also affecting human sciences. It is affecting the whole knowledge of society. So I would like to broaden the scope of science in an after-truth era in order to introduce also human science in the discussion. Besides, isn't it ironic that President Trump's controversial attitude is precisely giving a boost to the discussion and the consciousness on climate change. This is ironic. It is interesting. You know, it is the blind who make us realize what it means to see. And this is going on. And so thus, let us go into the country or the city of the blind where knowledge don't matter anymore. In this PowerPoint of a professor, of course, as you can see. <laughs> I never use it. First question, how alternative facts come to be? How to explain that people nowadays could ignore climate change? How to understand that in this era, people could reject theory of evolution? How is this possible? Well, ignorance is human, and there are a lot of things we do not know. But already in Roman law, 2,000 years ago, it was accepted that the gross ignorance, so-called crassa ignorantia, that the gross ignorance has to be assumed to be guilty. This is guilty behavior, the gross ignorance. And um, we have now gross ignorance we see this, and first of all, what we see is there is a kind of ideological ignorance. There is ideological ignorance. There is fact-free science and belief. The first thing that we see is that it, linked, it is linked with belief. Um, belief, religion, opinion. Um, for instance, um, the Jehovah Witnesses sometimes refuse vaccination. This is linked with belief. The methodology of alternative facts linked with religion very often uses the so-called literally lecture of texts. We know that this is a devastating method. Consider, for instance, Muslim extremism today, which is linked with this so-called literally lecture of text. Another methodology which is more um, useful in um, my talk is the methodology of a lawyer and fact-free science. What I would like to say this is that a lawyer is making a choice of arguments in a large field of arguments. He's choosing precisely some things in order to defend, to defend an idea, a, pro a proposition. It is a construction. And when we use the methodology of a lawyer in other sciences, we have one-sided analysis. A good example is, for example, Holocaust denial. They are saying, for instance, that Zyklon B um, is um, a delousing agent. This is right, but when Zyklon B is used in an undiluted form, it is mortal. Now, let us now go to strategic. There is ideological ignorance, there is also a strategic ignorance. An example, 
deliberate lies. Colin Powell was lying in 2003 before the United Nations concerning the mass destruction weapons of Saddam Hussein. The Nazis were lying in 1933 concerning considering, um, the, the fire of the Reichstag. The more freedom of press we have, the more difficult it is for this kind of alternative facts to remain um, as it is. We are entitled to contest it through freedom of expression, to freedom and of analysis. Okay, let us now go to alternative facts in Europe, because what I would like to say is that alternative facts are not only linked with the United States, with President Trump and with the elections of November 2016. It started already a few years before in Europe, also linked with populism in politics and with a link with the rise of alternative facts in media, in politics. But there it is linked not with climate change or a discussion on exact sciences, if we could call this so, but it is more linked with human sciences and more precisely with history and national identity. National identity. Let me say first this. Your personal identity is built up through parenthood, education, language, religion, relations, opinions, and so on. And in the same way, our collective identity, even our national identity, is a mental construction which is built up through experience, traditions, myths, values, and so on. It is a mental construction. And what we see is now that in countries of Eastern Europe, the, the making of the national identity is rising since populist parties came into power and we see there an infiltration of alternative facts. Let us first make the analysis of Hungary. In Hungary, we have this remarkable fact. Let me first say this. Um, in the Second World War, Hungary had some problems, but it started already before. Between 1920 and October 1944, the month is important, Hungary was led by, governed by Miklos Horthy, who was a dictator. It was an anti-parliamentary system, totalitarian since the 1920s, with even in the interwar period already um, official discrimination against the Jews. During the war, Hungary had an alliance with Nazi Germany. In the meanwhile, nevertheless, in March 1944, Hungary was invaded by German troops because there were some difficulties. But in fact, this invasion was only formal because Miklos Horthy remained in power. So he continued to assume political responsibility of what was going on in his country, just as it was in France. So he remained in power. The Germans were there, okay. But. And then in, um, in May and June 1944, the deportations of the Jews started. The German ar army was more or less present, but it was the German army who deported the Jews. It were, Romani it were Hungarian police officers who deported the Jews, who arrested them. It were Hungarian state officials. It were Hungarian so-called patriotic volunteers who arrested the Jews and who deported them to Auschwitz. And one could, we, we could hardly imagine that Horthy should have statues in, po in Hungary, but it is. There are statues devoted to um, Miklos Horthy um, in Hungary. It should be the same as we, should, as we would have statues devoted to Hitler in Germany. A little bit the same, more or less, more or less. We could discuss about the differences, of course, but more or less the same. There is more. Since 2010, a new party, the Fides party, with Viktor Orban came into power, and they are intensifying the cultus of Miklos Horthy. Miklos, 
a patriot. Miklos, who, f who declared war in 1942 against Russia, the enemy of Hungary nowadays. Russia, um, uh, Miklos Horthy, who defended the real Hungarians, the real, the ethnic Hungarians. You understand where it is about. And in our countries, in a country as Belgium and elsewhere, we are discussing on contemporary society through polar polarizing issues as are headscarves, halal food, ritual slaughter, same-sex marriage, and so on. These are polarizing issues where we discuss about the world we want. In a country as Hungary, these kind of discussions are not through these kind of issues, but it are discussions on the past. Because the analysis of the past is reflecting the world we want and the values we share. And this is going on in a country as um, Hungary. And then we see this remarkable monument. The discussion on monuments, which is also in the United States, General Lee in, um, in the south, here Budapest. Victor Horban surprised everyone with this statue in the night of the 19th to the 20th July 2014, nearby the Parliament. What we see here is the Archangel Gabriel, who is representing innocent Hungary, who was invaded on the 19th March of 1944 by the Germans, the Eagle. This monument is ignoring the fact that Hungary was already an ally of Germany the years before. This monument is ignoring, denying that Hungary had something to do with what happened in Hungary in the months after March, the deportation of the Jews. This is a scandal. But what Victor Horta didn't realize is that these kind of monuments, it is a point of crystallization for political opposition. As you can see here, every day there is something there before a statue. It's interesting. Democracy can survive with this kind of um, political action. Let us um, look at Poland. A little bit the same. Since 2015, we see in Poland um, the party law and justice. They are now in power with uh, Premier um, Kaczynski. And it's just the same. They are firing museum di directors, rewriting history books, and so on, in order to create a story, a national uh, identity around a patriotic, a patriotic Poland. And this creation of alternative facts, too, is confronted, Second World War, with the phenomenon of the mass destruction of the Jews in Europe. It's just the same in Poland. And there is a difference. Because, you know, in Poland, 90% of the Jews were exterminated. This is, in, in Belgium, it was almost 50%. In Holland, 75%. In Poland, 90%. And most of the Jews were living in Poland. So it were 3 million of the, of the deaths were Jews in Poland. And it is clear, it is evident that, of course, the, this was perpetrated by the Nazis. This is clear. But this was only possible in Poland to do this with a certain willingness, a certain cooperation by Polish people, just as it was in Belgium with the deportation of the Jews, in France, in Holland, just the same. But they do not understand it this way in the party law and freedom. And um, there is a, a museum in Gdansk, a, an exceptional war museum in Gdansk, with an historical approach, very interesting, and the museum will be closed within a few months. The museum director um, had to leave. Okay, um, what we see is that now there is a law which will be um, published um, if it is uh, enabled by Parliament, and saying that who is publicly and erroneously accusing the Polish nation or the Polish state of being responsible or complicit in Nazi crimes 
He will be imprisoned for two years. And what we see here, we are in the heart of the democracy. True history, what is going on, that the falsification of historical facts, true gross ignorance, it is guilty. We are precisely in the heart of the democracy. And to conclude, to conclude, in this overview, I went from the United States to countries as Hungary and Poland in order to show you that there is more going on than climate change and exact sciences, that it is an, an invasion of alternative facts through populism. But as I said, the more the freedom of press, the more freedom of research, the more difficult it will be for this gross ignorance, this retrograde um, way of interpreting facts will remain. It will not remain, but there is only condition, one condition, democracy has to remain. And this is our society where we need to fight for. Thank you.